You guys training today? I just left the gym. I just got. I just trained a little bit this morning, but yeah. today's more, more recovery. And then I'll do. I'm gonna do jujitsu tonight. Yeah. Just in the gi drill and stuff. Yeah, I might be there tonight. Is it oh, gi? cool. Is it gi tonight? Or is oh. no gi? Are you talking about lab or his place? Oh, the lab. Oh, okay, I'm yeah. going to hit. Teams. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're rolling. Jobin's vaginas, episode seventy, sponsored by ValleyWideGlass.com and Happy Valley Pipe company.com happy valley P pipe company our brand new sponsor they're fucking pretty badass they can do any custom pipe any custom bong put your pictures on it look they sent me one with pictures of my dogs picture of me and my dogs picture uh gym logo sent sugar a cool one with his dogs and danny and shit so happy valley pipe company.com okay our guest today is a filmmaker Jiu-Jitsu filmmaker and Jiu-Jitsu black belt, um, Stuart Cooper. What's up, Stuart? What's up? Yeah, thanks for having me on such short notice. Fuck yeah, hit, hit Stuart up. Well, I just met Stuart. I've been a fan of your shit for a long time because you put that ADCC vlog. What was your first ADCC vlog you put out? 2009? Uh, 2011. Damn. 11, that's right. 2011 was the first one. So 2011, that's where I started watching that. I was like, damn, this guy's fucking... I remember you showed me like a long time ago. I think back at like the apartments when I first moved here, I think we watched that. That was crazy. I was like... So, so you're sweet. from... You're from... Uh, right now you're teaching in Vancouver, right? Yeah, yeah. I just relocated to Vancouver. I'm now the jiu-jitsu coach at DS Combat Sports. Sweet. How'd oh, you cool. meet so, Ryan in Thailand? Yeah, I met Ryan back in, I think it was 2012 in, at Tiger Muay Thai. You know, I was a purple belt then, and he mm -hmm. rocked up. He was just got a contract with one championship, mm -hmm. and he was friends with one of my friends, and like we trained a little bit, and then kind of stayed in contact mm -hmm. from there. And then, we, we, you know, social media can really keep in contact with people. Yeah, so we were following yeah. each other, and then I noticed he opened up a, a gym after we retired in Vancouver, and already in four years... It's like the biggest MMA gym in Vancouver. And he's got some big plans later this year. So uh, they didn't really have a strong, <clears throat> you know, jiu-jitsu team. Mm -hmm. And then a dedicated coach. And he mm -hmm. just planted the seed with me. And then, mm -hmm. you know, some things. Um, I kept getting a lot of staph infections out in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And it was affecting my health, you know, a lot. I was on antibiotics like every other month. Fuck. And I love Thailand. I would love to have stayed out there, but my health comes first. So yeah. I don't think my white English skin is made for the, <laughs> so what's the, the Thailand weather. You know? What's the training and just living like in Thailand in general? Because we've been oh, wanting amazing. to go for a while. Oh, you'll love it out there. It's really? perfect. There's a lot of uh, UFC guys like you know, relocating out there mm -hmm. now because it's cheap accommodation. It's uh, cheap food. And you can just really focus, you know, on just training mm -hmm. and not really worry about, you know, money. What You're about the cheap, lady yeah. boys? <laughs> or lady Are boys? They the and the lady boys, you know, you could, some of them you actually can't tell. You, know, oh, you really sure, can't tell. Dude. Kim's gonna fuck a dude four hundred percent. There's the ones that are walking around like two hundred pound. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, some of them, it's like, damn, like, I would never have known. That's fucking <laughs> wild. There's a lot too, huh? There's a lot. Yeah, it's damn. it's normal over there. How? You know? I wonder why. You know. What? It's a culture thing, isn't it? I, there was a lady boy actually uh, working behind. Is that the, what they're called? The, lady boys? Is that what they're preferred um, called? Or I actually, wonder? no, I think that's offensive, actually. Oh, I think. <laughs> actually, not sure how they refer to them. But huh. at Tiger Muay Thai Grill, there was, you know, one working behind the grill serving food. And, Damn. Yeah. Damn, that's wild. <laughs> that's another crazy. crazy world. Yeah, just really nice people. That's really yeah, nice well, person, yeah. if you're buzzed up, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if you got a lot of buzz. But, but you guys were just talking about uh, the Rashad Evans podcast. And he, did he, is he the one who brought up mushrooms on the podcast uh, it just started like pretty instantly talking about mushrooms. i don't remember how it got brought up but the f i've listened to the first 34 minutes and it's been non-stop about psychedelics damn and, and, and how it's changed his life fuck so he's just starting to do them and stuff. I, probably I, he, after he seems, fighting and i think I don't, I don't know when he said he started doing but he seems like he's done quite a bit now man something like that for rashad evans where he's at the pinnacle and now he's on these five fight losing streams something like the plant medicines would probably help more than anything mm. get That's rid of that and be like okay i'm not attached to being a fighter like i'm on I'm, I'm my own human you know something huge like that have you ever experienced much psychedelics yeah quite a lot actually really uh, my first experience with psychedelics was actually when i was about I think I was quite young, about 21 in Amsterdam, you know, and I had a just a small mushroom trip, but it was mm -hmm. the first time I kind of, 
fought and looked at things differently, you know. And uh, it had a big effect to me, but then I didn't do them for probably until I was, yeah, I think it was 32, 33. Mm -hmm. So I had a an ayahuasca experience, a strong one, a couple of years ago. Where at? Uh, that was in... Um, uh, an island called Fimu off uh, Copenhagen in Denmark and uh, that was yeah. the that whole was, shaman was... and everything or did oh, they yeah. just have yeah. oh okay right on yeah shaman well, there was there was a few shaman there. there was a few uh, like helpers there shaman apprentices oh, cool. but one of the shaman was all the way from Peru mm. there was 18 people in the room everyone's there for their own different reasons and uh, everyone's having different were you by yourself or were you with a uh, I went by myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I actually told my mom and dad I was going to London for the weekend <laughs> uh, to do to do a filming job because I knew uh -huh. they wouldn't understand. Right. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. didn't even know what it was. I mm -hmm. didn't tell them about it until probably a, a year later over a Skype phone Damn. call. You know. I so want to know how many how days was it? How many days was the retreat? Um, it was two. It was two days, oh, and then the days. following weekend I went and did another uh, ceremony in Spain. Uh, I did San Pedro and Cambo medicine. You know, the, I've got the scars here. The the frog uh -huh. poison. Damn. I didn't so, know what that is. <clears throat> Cambo, huh. uh, come, again, it comes from Peru, but it's, uh, uh, they use it for hunting. They, they, they get a match and they burn a couple marks in your shoulder, and then they put the poison on there, and it hits you instantly. Damn. And then you continue to throw up violently for about 20 minutes. And then you have to continue to drink six liters of water to you know flush it all back out. And that's hard. Obviously, you can't hold six liters of water yeah. in your body, but... You're just drinking what? it, throwing up, drinking it, throwing up. But after about 20 to 30 minutes, you feel fantastic. I, honestly, after that, I trained jiu-jitsu that night. I've never trained so good in my life. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Yeah, that makes, crazy. They say it sharpens your senses. So that's why they use it for hunting. Like mm. it, it increases your reflexes and your senses. That's badass. So how, how was the ayahuasca trip? Did you go deep into it? Yeah, yeah. The first night was kind of a tester. They gave me one and a half glasses. And they did that with everyone. They want to see how everyone reacts to the medicine. Mm -hmm. And I had it was a very positive experience the first night. But everything was still here. This reality was still here. Mm -hmm. But when I closed my eyes, I was seeing a lot of images, a lot of colors. But the next night, I went deeper. You know, I think I had three, three cups. Damn. And two hours in, I'm gone. I'm all, and the yeah. shaman comes up to me and goes, how are you doing? I'm like... I'm good. This is this is not this even is amazing. in this reality. At I was all? still in this reality, and she goes, "Do you want more?" And I'm like, "I'm pretty gone right now. You think I should have more?" She goes, "I think you should go deeper." Oh. So she gave me another glass, and Were she you gave scared? me some. Uh, no, I was leading up to it. Yeah, I suppose I was. Yeah, but um, when I had that third glass, the second and third glass, I was gone. I was gone. My consciousness was just in another. Man. Yeah, I was like, I was in heaven. I was in heaven. But there's other people in the room. They were in hell. Oh, I'm sure. You know, they were going through some shit. And mine was a very positive experience. But um, oh. the reason mine was positive, because I'd just been through hell the year before. Oh. You know? I think it kind of gives you what you need. Hmm. And, uh, Makes sense. So, and yeah. you, did you have a decent child childhood? I did, yeah. So yeah, that could have been... Where, that's, that's where I hear where the, people go and do ayahuasca and a lot of those childhood traumas fucking come to the, yeah. Come to the roof. Yeah. No, mine wasn't <laughs> scary at all. It was... Uh, yeah, overwhelmingly positive. That's know? fucking and, badass. Um, have you had this, those scary, you've had the scary trips? Uh, I had one scary DMT oh, trip. Yeah. yeah um, like, this is maybe a couple months ago. You know, I had some DMT in my room and I hadn't done it for a while. And it's been sitting there in my room because it's not something you just go and do. Is right, it? right. You got to be in the right mood and it's been sitting there. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should do this. You Were know, you feeling like you needed to get through something or figure something yeah, out the reason I, I had just relocated to Vancouver you know from it was a big culture shock I've been mean, living in Thailand and Singapore oh, yeah. since 2012 I just completely oh, changed my okay. life Dude. and moved to Vancouver oh, and you know it's a little bit of a culture shock so I just felt like I wanted to put things in perspective you know to make you know Hell see yeah. if it was gonna show that I'm on the right path yeah mm -hmm. but uh, to be honest I didn't get much out of it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's scary yeah. but you were saying because of where you did it yeah so um, maybe um, could have been where I was part. I've moved now but when I moved to Vancouver where I was living I'm only like one block away from a road called Hastings and Hastings is like LA Skid Row oh shit. and it's like it's like a scene from a zombie film, you know. There's a lot. There's a big drug problem, big homeless drug God, problem. That's there. the worst. Thing so I was living in the middle of that, <clears throat> and the times I've done DMT and ayahuasca before, that's been in nice locations, nice setting, you know. You know, we did some uh, breathing exercise and yoga before it, but uh, this I just kind of did in my room, and you know, in a pretty 
sketchy location and it was a it was a sketchy trip you know <laughs> Ooh, that's wild it was very uncomfortable actually but it, yeah. those didn't that how long did that trip last if you just smoked dmt by uh, itself it wasn't that long i think it was only like eight minutes or oh, something that's yeah but that's it, how my salvia trip was ugh. have you done yeah. salvia i did salvia when i was i think 19 20 i didn't that's know what it was, was about and uh yeah i remember that being scary i that's, don't really remember ooh. what happened but yeah that was that shit freaks me out thinking about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, we did it in the apartment. We went and got it, and Sugar's like, okay, I'll go first. He went first. No, no, no. I didn't say, okay, I'll go first. Your ass said, you're going first. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you go first. I was like, all right. And whatever. he started freaking out, getting in a chair, and I was just like, just sit there. You're okay. You're okay. Was, and then he came out of it. He's like, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm like, okay, good. And, you know, and I said, if your ass freaked out, you'd be like, you got to try it. You got to try it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, that right. was the first time I felt like I was like, gone. From my body. That was the freakiest yeah. thing ever. I did not like that. Is salvia legal here? I, I, I think it's like uh, incense or whatever. Considered like... Uh, like you can buy it at the store, but they yeah. can't... Yeah. So they have to say, it not for human smoke. consumption. Yeah, but then they can sell it, yeah. Dang, yeah. so Vancouver's probably... I bet you that was a culture sh- culture shock. What's the biggest thing that's like changed where you're like, fuck, this is... Oh, the, definitely the weather and how expensive it is to live, you mm-hmm. know. And I have to work harder to earn the same amount mm. of money you know in mm. thailand i was my day would start at 8 30 a.m and it would finish at 11 30 a.m i would just teach two classes a day mm-hmm. five days a week and saturday sunday off so i had the whole day free yeah. to go to the beach have massages but um it was almost not challenging enough you yeah know? you know i almost wanted Too something more <laughs> yeah and because i was working for tiger Muay Thai, i was never going to be my own thing i've always wanted my own jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. team and that's what ryan diaz offered me he said look if you join Diaz Combat Sports. It can be Stuart Cooper Jiu Jitsu inside of Diaz Combat that's Sports. That's fucking so awesome. Now I've got my. I'm building up my own Jiu Jitsu team. So yeah, that's fucking sweet. Yeah. it's it's pretty fun because now because I think at at the gym I have I think we have sixty four sixty five Jiu Jitsu members, and it's pretty fun building them up from the ground up. Love when yeah. the just the white belts come and they don't know anything and just seeing how good you can make them step by step with the right. With the right ingredients. It's pretty fun, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The, the, um, it's the first time I'm actually seeing this because at Tiger Muay Thai, it's different people uh, coming different through. Levels. They're never there for... Well, it's just people there on holiday, training mm-hmm. holidays. So I never really get to see people progress. Mm-hmm. You know, they'd be there for a week or a month and then they disappear. I never see them again. Whereas now in Vancouver, it's the same people every day and I'm really seeing them learn and put it, my techniques that I've been showing them into practice. So I'm seeing them grow now. That's fucking so, badass. It's cool. Sweet. Yeah. That's bad. So you, so how many days to teach? Uh, I mean, how many hours a day do you teach now? Um, so right now I do the afternoon class, twelve to one thirty, and then the evening class, which is like seven to eight thirty, and then we stay around for an hour rolling afterwards. Cool. But I do privates in between there. Nice. So, but before Tiger Muay Thai, <clears throat> I was actually evolve evolve MMA. Um, okay, in I remember Singapore. That. I remember yeah. That. Now that was insane. Because I was teaching eight classes a day, six Ooh, days a week. Oh, shit. That's, That's just a not... job. Yeah, six, I ended up hating jiu-jitsu. I'm sure. <laughs> it it's was exhausting just too much. teaching. It's exhausting, yeah. yeah. Um, and the problem was those, out, those classes, they were, they were like spread out mm-hmm. throughout the day. So I'm, there was never a set routine. Mm-hmm. So after, I think it was after about 10 months, it slowly started to break me down. I and I just had to step away. You know? mm. And then Tiger Muay Thai offered me the head coach job, head, head jiu-jitsu coach mm-hmm. job. So I went from teaching eight classes a day, six days a week, to two classes a day, five days a week. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> In a cheaper country for pretty much the same salary. Yeah, that was a no-brainer. Nice. So it's pretty easy to eat healthy and clean there? In Thailand? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it really is. Especially on um, the road, um, the soy where Tiger Muay Thai, there's Phuket top team on there. There's unit. There's a few CrossFit gyms, a few Muay Thai gyms. And that road, is. Re- I've watched it develop since 2012. Mm-hmm. 2012, there was only two gyms on there, a pharmacy, a 7-Eleven. There was nothing on that road. Mm-hmm. Now, it's you've got caf- really like healthy cafes and... Absolutely. Uh, restaurants and it's a uh, it's a it's a good place to go if you want to be a, <clears throat> a professional athlete you know easy to focus up huh that's yeah. pretty sweet yeah but it's easy to get distracted there oh God. <laughs> Very what do you easy. get distracted with Ooh, those fucking uh, lady boys <laughs> yeah yeah girls lady boys uh, <laughs> drugs you know um just that it's so laid back there. Mm-hmm. You could very, you could be, you could be, you can be a hard worker there, but you could also be lazy. Very chill. Oh. Yeah, you could be very chill. Yeah. Is in the in Singapore weed's illegal, right? 
in Singapore, oh, it's very illegal. It could was it hard to come by? No, no, not really. And it was wasn't good weed though. That mm, it was the same stuff for whatever weed. reason in Thailand, in Asia in general, the weed is not good. It's like that. Probably because it's so hard. To, they probably have to be so secretive growing it. And just so yeah. fucking don't have the right shit. It's like cardboard. It's like that brown cardboardy the, stuff with red string in it. Reggie. Reggie. It's yeah. Reggie. Yeah, pot Reggie. I don't <laughs> like it because it, it gives. When I would smoke that weed, it would uh, make me paranoid. Oh mm. fuck! You know, yeah. super paranoid. Where the weed in Vancouver and here, it's like. You know, you know what you're buying. There's one right. that I buy in Vancouver, and it's like not point something THC, but mostly CBD. But it's bud, and I roll mm-hmm. it in a joint, smoke it, and it's like really nice and mellow. You know, it doesn't get me paranoid at nice. all. Nice, yeah. So. Definitely different levels of weed. Yeah. So that's that's always a funny thing when people say, like in Thailand, you were teaching two hours a day, and sometimes I, I teach two hours, three hours a day, but people think, oh man, when I retire, I'm not going to do anything. It's hard to just have all that extra time not to really yeah. do anything. You better like being with yourself and find little things you like doing. You know what would you do when you were just by yourself after you're done teaching every day? Well, I was my last time I was there. I was with my girlfriend, so <clears throat> we'd go to the gym together. You know, so I would do my strength conditioning there. And we'd go for massages, go to the beach. You know, I'd hang out with my friends, and then I go always go back and train in the evening as well. Fuck yeah! So I would always have four days. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty full days of the shit we like doing. Yeah, but sometimes, similar. you know, there was the times when my girlfriend went back to Singapore and maybe, I don't know, so you could get bored there sometimes, yeah. you know. <laughs> That's sweet. So how long have you been doing jiu-jitsu and how did you get started in jiu-jitsu? I've been doing jiu-jitsu since, two, I think I started in 2009. So it's been 11 years now. And uh, I was at university doing a degree and that's when I first saw UFC. And... Um, as, when I saw it, I was like, damn, this is this. I've always wanted to learn like real fighting, mm-hmm. but I went to karate lessons when I was younger. And I was like, I don't see this working. You know, <laughs> right. this doesn't seem real to me. And then <clears throat> I saw UFC. I was working at a health club at the time as a receptionist. And I asked one of the personal trainers, what's this UFC? He's like, that's MMA. I went, well, where can I do this? This looks like real fighting. He goes, it is. I goes, I do Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. So come train Muay Thai with me. And then, you know, a few days later, he took me to a Muay Thai lesson. And it was MMA after that. So I jumped in the MMA class and uh-huh. everyone was taking me down and strangling me. People half my size. And I it just I was like, what is this ground stuff? Why does everyone keep taking me down? Like, That's jujitsu. Like, right, I just want to learn that. Just that. <laughs> and then that was it. Every Fuck day. Yeah. yeah, twice a day, every day, ever since then. Injuries aside, I just got I got addicted to it. You know? That's badass. So what belt were you when you started making the um like vlogs and the Um, I believe I was a blue belt. Yeah, I was a blue belt. Yeah. You just got your own camera, and yeah, it was a. There's a scar here. <clears throat> I was. Uh, I wanted to, right away. I wanted. I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be jujitsu like <clears throat> champion. I wanted to mm-hmm. train jujitsu and compete full mm-hmm. time. And then I had a. I was on someone's back in a, in a, one of the seminars, <clears throat> and I, he shook me off the back. I posted my left arm, and it snapped back the mm-hmm. opposite way. So mm-hmm. the skin was just holding it on. So I couldn't in the seminar. Yes, yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck. I didn't even feel it happen. I just remember posting and collapsing to the side, and this guy's trying to choke me. I went, whoa, stop, stop. He goes, what? And I went, something just happened. And then he sees my arm and goes, oh. He goes, Ooh. shit, don't look. I'm like, what do you mean, don't look? Of course, I looked. and <laughs> Oh, fuck. Yeah, I didn't actually feel any pain until about 20, 30 minutes oh, afterwards. Your body's been just shocked from this? Yeah, yeah. But, oh, when the pain kicked in, it kicked in. Fuck, so dude. then I couldn't train jiu-jitsu um, or even work for a year. It took a long time, a year to fully recover. So that's when I picked up a video camera. Uh-huh. And Ryan Hall and Gunnar Nelson came to England to do seminars. and So I just filmed the seminars just for something to do, you uh-huh. know. And then... Yeah, I don't, at that time, there wasn't YouTube, Facebook, or anything like that. And there's no one really, there wasn't Flow Grappling, there wasn't people making yeah. Jiu-Jitsu videos. So I was like, kind of one of the first people to kind of make a high quality Jiu-Jitsu video and yeah. post it on YouTube and Facebook for free. And the, I remember them getting crazy amount of views and a lot of good positive feedback. Uh-huh. And it was just a domino effect from there. I made, yeah. I kept, kept, kept going, kept making, every time someone came to England to do a seminar, I would film it edit it together post it online and that's bad yeah it just kind of went from there so i'm not like a trained film i just call i call it street cooper films i'm not a film yeah yeah just kind of make it up as i go along yeah that's fucking people seem to though. like it <laughs> yeah that's fucking badass yeah hell yeah so what's the biggest thing you've because you've been that how many you've been all the adcc since 2011 then yeah i missed out 2017 i missed okay. that one yeah that was in yeah. finland that was in finland yeah that's that was right. a good one 
So what's the biggest difference you've seen or when you're on these trips and stuff, do you get to roll with some of the guys and who's like the best fucker you've ever rolled with? Oh yeah, so when I was traveling making these videos, I would get to train with everyone pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was a, a brown belt, I remember, Cy he's a friend of mine, Cyborg Abreu. Uh -huh. I remember him just, you know, just Maul, huh? mauling me, just playing with me. And Rodolfo Vieira as well. <sighs> Damn. Yeah. That's but the good thing nice. was, I was, I was training all the time and just traveling around never stopped training and then just worked my way up to black belt you know and then um it's only in the last two years i actually kind of had the confidence to compete as a black belt yeah you know now i'm like um yeah really gonna start competing a lot more you know? yeah that's fucking badass i trained with stuart yesterday and i couldn't pass his guard he was fucking good, <laughs> good you like gear nogi more uh nogi yeah, yeah yeah i like the gi but i definitely prefer nogi more. yeah nogi's fucking yeah. sweet it's more fun. It's faster, especially with the leg locks Which now. Animals. Yeah, yeah, it adds that. a lot. We went to the Lachlan Giles seminar a couple weekends ago, and it's like, holy fuck! These guys it's are just a another whole level. another it's fucking amazing, world. It? Yeah, it's like damn. But it's pretty crazy. This this year at the ADCC, I feel like I saw a lot more like teenage kids. How many was <sighs> yeah, there? Yeah. The Ritu or just the Ritolo brothers. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do a video with them soon. Actually, when I go back to England, uh -huh. they're gonna be there. I'm, they're competing on the same card I am in a three weeks time. So, Where, what card uh, is that? Uh, Grapple Fest. Okay. I think it's Grapple Fest eight. Hell yeah. Yeah, so I'm competing in that one. Is it weeks. is it a tournament or is it one guy? No, just one. one yeah, who is it? Uh, who uh, Santeri Lilius, okay. Finnish black belt. He's really good. Hell yeah! I got my work cut out for me. And it's that's in gi or no gi? That's in no gi. Okay. Yeah, right he's on. more of a gi competitor from what I've seen. I can't really find much no gi stuff on him, but I know uh, just a, not too long ago he had a very close match with uh, Adam Wardzinski, who's like a no gi world champion. So he lost, I think, ten, twelve. Only lost by two close points. Match. So. That just lets me know this guy's good. He's good. <laughs> yeah. And all yeah. he looks legal? Yep, yeah, everything's legal, yeah. Uh, no slams, though. That's the only thing. Oh, uh -huh, cool. The twisters, he looks all good. Um, this one is at 90 kilograms, so that's like 200 pounds. Oh, okay. But I'm underweight right now. I've been <laughs> stuffing my face, trying to put weight <laughs> trying on. To How much you weigh? I'm um, like 190 right now. Nice. But for what, I, I usually am around 200 pounds, but for whatever reason, the last year, I've slowly just started to not weigh as much anymore, up, you know? huh? so i think after this one i'm gonna say to the promoter hey just put me in 185 nice yeah you know? so what's it you're because you're pretty jacked dude and i felt you uh, yesterday you're super fucking strong what's your diet like on a daily basis say a day you're training once or twice or a normal day what's your diet like so i'll probably stop eating you know at like <clears throat> 11 p.m at night and then i won't eat until uh, i'll train in the morning so i'll actually go to the the afternoon class teach train in that and then i probably won't eat until about 2 p.m mm. so that's kind of like it's not even like i'm trying to fast it's just i might fa actually hungry, fasting really? by it yeah i'm not really hungry so i've kind of been fasting all these years by accident mm. <laughs> nice. um and then after that i'll eat something i don't actually eat that much in the day you know i'll, have, I'll, I'll eat very healthy you know mm. i always i'm very conscious food. of what i put in my body and yeah a lot of whole foods what happens when so. you get the munchies Oh man, I Those get the munchies. Get you if I get the munchies, like my favorite thing is like almond milk with granola. So I'm not too guilty Ooh, about it. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah. A shake. We've just been doing shakes. Yeah. Just chocolate protein, almond butter, and frozen berries with some almond milk. Yeah, it's hard to beat. It's a fucking milkshake. Yeah, it's hard to yeah. beat. <sighs> yeah, it's fucking good. Do you have any big daily or nightly routines that you like? Um, so I, I get back pretty late every night. So I probably get back about 9.30. And then I just... I take a couple edibles and mm -hmm. then, yeah, wow. just eat a lot of good food and then just watch YouTube videos. Sometimes I'll actually, if we get back late, I'll do a bit of editing or whatever mm -hmm. video I'm working on. Nice. Yeah, and then just pass out watching a film. Fuck you know, When yeah. you take edibles, yeah. do you feel, for me, if I take edibles, I feel so fucking drowsy and dry in the morning. Yeah, this is a problem. Yeah. So for so, it, it is like I'm like God. Yeah, oh, that's why I don't like going over five milligram. Yes, that's, that's so, a good idea. But I do. I noticed because I haven't had any. I didn't bring any with me, so mm. I haven't had edibles for we got some, a week. We'll and I'm waking up some. in the morning oh, cool. fine. You know. Yeah. yeah, I just took one then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah, the, the, I wake up drought. Even just smoking. It's hard but, getting up in the morning. Yeah. Even if I don't like once, I'm gonna start cutting back soon for my fight coming up. It's like you wake up and like whoa, but yeah. now it's like I wake up and I'm like. Well, have you been lately. taking yeah. edibles lately? Just because I've been smoking, not edibles. Oh, you have, but when do you stop well, smoking been, at night? Six thirty. Six. I'll, I'll yeah. Same. Smoke one puff, and I'm. It's basically a. I'd say the equivalent to taking five milligrams of edible, maybe yeah. a little more. Yeah. Cause I, but one it, puff and I'm good for the whole night. Like I'm high, hungry, and satisfied. Dude, it definitely, yeah. definitely ups when you wake up. Oh, when yeah. you wake up, you're like, 
boom. And I've been just trying not to take a lot of rips at night either. Yeah. It's been helping a lot. Does CBD make you feel groggy in the morning, you think? No. No. no I don't think it does. That should isn't improve. It? That Like, if you take um, THG and then you counteract it with CBD, it should make you less drowsy. Yeah, I do. I try and put them together. Mm, yeah, that's good. What helps me, I just found a shop in Vancouver recently and they sell uh, cacao tea. No, not cocoa tea, cocoa tea, mm-hmm. cocoa tea bags. So uh, that helps me get up in the morning now. Oh, yeah. Cocoa so tea, um, it's kind of in a gray right. area in Vancouver, but it's uh, actually the cocaine plant. Oh, okay. like not There's like 0.01% cocaine in there. Yeah, but it's right. actually, <laughs> it's the other, the other <laughs> alkaloids in there. And uh, you drink it as a tea and it really like, it gets you going. It gives you a nice clean energy. Fucking yeah, that's sweet. Tea. Yeah. That's really so nice. I've been uh, having a few... I've been drinking that in the morning recently to get. That's get better. You a ca- uh, coffee guy? Yeah, yeah. Morning, oh. Yeah, I try. I have one in the morning, but actually, I've, I've swapped it for that coca tea at the mm. moment. I made the nice. mistake of having both. I had a tea and then I had a coffee. Oh my god, that was a big mistake. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> You've been doing your L press still, Sean? Oh yeah, I made JJ and I one this morning with uh, Yeah, just we just a little oat milk, the a little bit of grass fed butter, some honey. Mm-hmm. Blend that bad boy up, and then I put a little cinnamon on top and shook oh, it yeah. up. Oh, Dude, it's like good. a hook. and it's like because you, you go to you go get that at Union Coffee, you mm-hmm. spend six bucks. Dude, mine was yeah. my large oat milk latte the other day. Three shots was seven fifty. And you go make the exact same, probably same, better, probably, probably better. better, definitely better quality. Mm-hmm. And it shit's fucking so much cheaper. But it's so nice to just go get a coffee. Someone makes yeah, and just enjoy yeah. the whole process of making, making a good it, yeah. coffee. Do you usually make your own coffee? Yeah, in the morning, yeah. I actually like to buy that Bulletproof coffee. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the actual brand by, is it Dave Asprey's? That's right. Brand. Yeah, it's good, that stuff. Because I find there's no crash off it. Nice. Mm-hmm. But I do love it. I love I love Starbucks. You know, I love to go do to Starbucks. Do you? Yeah, oh, I do. The chicks, or? I love the, <laughs> the, vanilla, the vanilla flat white. Oof. Yeah, it's so good. What's the, I get so lactose what's the flat milk. white? What's the flat white? It's kind of like a latte, but I don't know what's different about it. It's just, just the way the foam. I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. That's what it is. I think it's a little bit creamier, but I love that. Nice. But you can, I had one the other day, actually, the Starbucks here, and they put, uh, instead of uh, milk, they used uh, coconut milk. Oh, my God, mm. that was good. Fucking good. That was yeah. really good. We li- Sean, we missed about 30 questions on those fan questions, so I'll just run through some quick okay. ones. <laughs> um, do you guys believe in ring rust? If so, do you think sugar will be affected on his return in March? I, I definitely think some people might be affected by ring rust, but I literally it's it's been, it'll be two years by the time I fight, but it doesn't feel like that long. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I'm gonna get in there and it's gonna be better than ever. Mm-hmm. And a lot of like I I don't think any of that's gonna f- affect me at all. Yeah. The emotions, the being out that long, the being on a big card, being a team, I don't think any of that's going to do anything. Well, that's what Tequino told me after we were sparring the other day. He's like, Sugar's like biggest asset is in those moments, he fucking shows up. Every time yeah. he shows up in those moments. And submitting Gomi, going the distance with Gilbert Melendez, like almost breaking him. Those gave you big confidence boosts in places you were lacking. Right. Always in the striking, you've had dangerous, dangerous confidence even two years ago, I told you, I'm like, dude, there's probably not a 135er that you can't stand up with right now. And now your ground's getting up to par two. So it's going to be hard to go in there and have ring rust, I think, yeah. with someone like you. BJJ question. When you're going at it and you're a, in a secure setup as you're going for the finish, what is your preferred position on top, side, or bottom? Okay, next question. <laughs> What would you re- recommend do for a twenty-year-old that isn't sure what he wants to do in life and is currently drifting aimlessly? You answer, on Stuart. Hmm. You're more mature than us. <laughs> I, suppose, I don't know. Is it like whatever they enjoy? What is it they really enjoy the most? You know, Man. what do they really like to do, and then just do that. It's but just the thing. Yeah. Sometimes people don't. They don't have hobbies. We're so, so lucky. It's a tough one, you know. We got passion. We're so yeah. lucky that we like have something we enjoy doing. Because remember, mm-hmm. when you asked my little brother that. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you like doing? He's like, I don't know. Yeah. He's 21 years old. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He doesn't know what he likes to do. Yeah. Play Call of Duty. He's like, you do that for a couple hours and you get bored, but having something you wake up and like, oh, I'm, I get to do that today is rare. We're lucky. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we're constantly thinking about it, thinking on ways we can prove, thinking of all those ways. Like, Jordan Peterson, that's what he says. He's like, finding finding something with meaning. Like, that's yeah. the... Gives you purpose, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a tough thing. Mm. You could ask yourself, what would you do if there wasn't even money, wasn't even an issue? What would you do every every single day if there wasn't even a, such a thing as money? 
what would you do that's each day? That's a good day? question. A good but question. even still, some people are like, I don't fucking know. If I wasn't for me for with fighting, I would wouldn't know. I would be like, yeah. fuck, I don't know. But I feel like if you're into, if you find something that you're into and attracted to, if you just immerse yourself in it and get good at it, figure it out. It's gonna take years, five, six. With seven money years. not being and and yeah. like yes. with money yeah, being yeah, at the yeah. bottom of that. Yep. That's important. And then maybe five, six, seven years when you become a master at that and you really know about it, you're going to be able to find work somewhere yeah. in that area, I feel like. Is it legal to smoke weed and drive in AZ? In Ireland, it's not even legal to have weed, so I'm not sure why it, way it works it looks like Tim smoking in his car. <laughs> I'm rarely just a puff here and there just get my mind right, guys. <laughs> but no, it's not illegal. I think it's considered a DUI. Yeah. yeah. So, what yeah. would you do if you caught John Jones in the bed with your missus? <laughs> I said, let me know you guys done. I'm out playing Call of Duty. Be easy on her, John. <laughs> Take her easy. <laughs> Tim, what's the heaviest chick you've boned or beat it to? Oh, God. Don't ask him. Don't ask that. This is that embarrassing. Know, boys. 220? No. <laughs> I don't think ever over two bills. What about you, Stuart? What's the question? What's the heaviest chick you've boned or beat it to? <laughs> God, that's so bad. Hey, over two bills? I have no idea, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, probably almost two bills. Yeah. Oh, well, fuck. What's the most important? That is, that's what's that's the most important part of your day, in your opinion? Most important part of my day. Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. For me, for me, I probably wake up. And the most important part of my day is just not getting on my phone right away. My yeah. post, wake up, do my little meditation practice I do, make my coffee, say hi to my puppies, write my journal if I do that, and just not get on that phone. Yeah, it true. makes yeah. my whole day much better. The first hour is important. I remember it was maybe like a couple of weeks ago. I woke up, first thing I do, I look at my phone, and I had a very negative uh, text message on there. It just ruined my whole day, just from the, from the right, from mm. the get-go, you know? It was on yeah. my mind the whole day, so... Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Waking up, not looking at your phone. Yeah. You just get, it's like the instantly you look at your phone, you kind of have that anxiety feeling almost. Like, what's yeah. next? Yes, yeah, yeah. Like, you if you can just anxiety. pause and like, all right, today's going to be a good day. Like you said, journaling, just making, making your, actually making your coffee and all that stuff. I, yeah, I think the mm. morning definitely sets you up for the good day. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's almost like you grab those phones and you're just. And whether it's subconsciously or what, you're always maybe comparing yourself a little bit. But when you don't have your phone and you're trying to just be grateful for all the shit you have, shit. we have so much shit. And we're so spoiled these days. Um, yeah, I think that's that's it. Um, Evan Daniels, do you work out in the morning of fight day? Yeah, we usually pretty much every time we'll we'll get a, like a little lung blow out in the morning. Nothing crazy. Fuck. It's- I'm trying to think, like, last fight, what do we do? Probably just hit mitts a little bit. Little, yeah, probably go, sprints. Th- go through about three three-minute rounds of the mitts of all the combos I think that we're going to see and open up your lungs because that's the time you cut. Sean's probably going to cut 10, 11 pounds those last three days. So you cut all that weight, and then you refuel, and then you get that that your body moving again, get that first sweat out of you and get that first, like, lung push out of you. So before the fight, we don't have to get that big lung push. Mm-hmm. Knowing what you both know about jujitsu, what is one thing you would do differently as a white belt to improve the rest of your journey? Stuart? One thing I would do differently as a white belt, slow down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Most of my injuries come from when I was white, white blue belt. How many surgeries <laughs> have you had? Uh, I've just come back from knee surgery, actually. So I've had elbow surgery and knee surgery. So only only two. I've had a broken foot, though, that didn't require cool. surgery. Mm-hmm. And I had a very bad neck injury two years ago, which I just avoided surgery before nice. as well. I got stenosis in my neck. And my discs collapsed together. And I lost the feel in these fe- fingers for quite a long time. Wow. But they were talking about putting an artificial plate, uh, artificial yeah. disc in my neck, but managed to avoid that. How did you avoid it? Um, just rest, you know, a lot of uh, traction, you know, a lot of physiotherapy, mm-hmm. the traction device, because my discs, you should have liquid. Was yeah. it jelly in between each disc? My di- it was disc on disc after the the inversion table where you hang up upside down. That um, you can do that, but my, the one I do is I do it in Vancouver. Now they put like a chin strap on you, and you lie there, and it just kind of lifts your oh, head okay. up, and you do that twice a week, and it just it brings the space between the discs mm. again. 
and then I could start to feel my fingers again. Oh, so but it was it was scary. It was probably scary. every surgeon you talked to said surgery, surgery. Oh surgery. man, yeah. When the, I had a torn meniscus here, and every physiotherapist and the doctor was like, "Yeah, you need surgery." I I just come back from appendix surgery and elbow surgery. I'm not, that would have been three surgeries in six months, so I didn't do the surgery. And that was fine. I never had surgery, but I had surgery. I had to have surgery here because it was a, a bucket handle tear, mm. and the meniscus ripped and was wedged in between, right in the middle of my knee. So my leg was locked, oh. and I couldn't straighten. It was like locked there. Mm. So if I didn't have the surgery, my leg would have been like that <laughs> permanently. So Fuck that. every time yeah. you got your surgeries, well, the menis- meniscus aren't too big of a recovery, but like mm. your elbow surgery stuff you just would do your filmmaking that kept you busy yeah yeah it's always what i do i go go back into the filmmaking and yeah, I, awesome. I, I have to train you know it's what kind of keeps me keeps the demons at bay yeah so when i had my elbow surgery i was doing lots of like squats when i did my knee surgery i just did loads of upper body Fuck you know yeah. lifting weights but so. slowing down as a white belt i like that that's probably the best answer just yeah slowing I like down. That especially yeah. for guys yeah. i feel like girls are better about kind of just like learning the moves oh, but yeah, sometimes right. guys if, especially if you're kind of strong like really weak guys like when i started i couldn't really power into any moves i had to kind of yeah but like stronger guys it's like mm. you see at the gym new yeah. guys especially like stronger wrestlers they'll just wrestle and do what they know yeah. instead of learning and slowing yeah. down well and it's a blessing and a curse because once you start getting to purple belt those you just guessing and exploding out it's going to start not working as right, much right yeah. yeah so you have to learn the right moves but yeah i think that's right too is just slowing down and actually in the gym trying the techniques not in the gym just focusing on winning all the time trying the techniques that's good trying the new techniques and learn uh, i think are big too i don't know about you but i struggle with white belts sometimes big strong white belts <laughs> they, move, they move in ways they should move <laughs> that's so like, what's going on here same with huh? striking I just, <laughs> I just told georgie or georgie that the other day i said it's hard going with a new person because they're not doing anything right <laughs> that's same with striking like, too you fucking yeah. you're boxing someone that's never boxed they'll crack you be like what the fuck that yeah. guy hit me yeah for <laughs> it's sure crazy you kind of just sure. have to grab a hold slow them down get them in a position slow them down for two or three minutes, wait till they get tired, then you can take <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then they'll make a mistake for yeah. sure. How do you how to avoid eating shitty while eating out? That's pretty, <sighs> it's pretty easy. Just order something healthy, right? <laughs> yeah, I know shit. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to it I it depends where you're at, but it's hard to find a, a legitimate organic restaurant yeah. that's gonna have oh, yeah, that's not gonna have like, oh it has organic beans, but everything else is and like yeah. they just put organic on it. Like for me, like getting something with shitty cheese. If it's not organic cheese, it's gonna fuck me up. I feel like. You feel like inflamed. Yeah. 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 The lactose, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's hard to. It's it is hard if you're gonna go out, plan on it being a cheat meal almost. Like if that's what you're gonna have to do. Yeah, if that's what you gotta do. That's why we're so lucky with our girls. The way they cook. Cause uh, after you cook organic veggies in coconut oil or grass-fed butter and then a wild game that you got or or just an organic meat from the store you start cooking all that stuff and using your own spices your sauces you literally can't beat that anywhere you go you go out and you're like i wish i would have ate at home are you good at cooking for yourself i'm not actually no no just because i'm so good places in vancouver there is yeah yeah so many good places is there yeah because yeah, like LA, there. there was some organic restaurants and i bet vancouver is pretty awesome yeah yeah. for girls too Yes. Yeah. Fucking hot chicks. Thailand was great. No one really eats in in Thailand because it's, it's actually cheaper to eat out. Ooh, that's so sweet. Huh. Everyone eats out. It's just kind of it's what cool. you do there, you know. And they just have organic shit that's like... Yeah, never used to, uh, but they do now because, you know, especially in Phuket, there's a big fitness and fight culture there now. That's so, so sweet. There's always we gotta go. restaurants there. Oh, you're going to love it. We gotta yeah, go. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to go. Where, yeah. where do you recommend we go? I would recommend Tiger Muay Thai. You know, I know all the coaches there. They're all my friends. And cool. For sure, they would hook you up with... Uh, they would love to have you. They would cool. hook you up with a hotel room, you know, give you free training. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. We After the fight, it. we'll do it. Good, there's good good fighters there as well. How much is flights there? Is it pretty cheap to fly there? It depends. That's the most expensive part. 500, 600? <laughs> yeah, it depends when you book it, you know. Sometimes you find really good deals. It's so, worth it if it's so it can, cheap to go... Yeah. Cheap to be stay there. Yeah. We definitely gotta go. You ready, Jay? You coming? <laughs> uh, what would you do about having insomnia anxiety? Being anxious about having insomnia. <laughs> or what would you do if you had insomnia? 
Oh, I'm just I'm thankful I don't have insomnia. Yeah, I've never had that. Pr- Actually, no, I did have that problem once. Do you have yeah. any like meditation type practice that you do at all? I try. I was I was very disciplined with it not too long ago, but I need. To, I have since I've been in Vancouver, I've been so busy, I haven't been doing it. But I would always take like an hour aside and do breathing exercises. Mm, nice. And I find that would really help re-energize me and calm my mind. But I haven't. I need to get back into it, especially if I'm going to do that for this match coming up because mm-hmm. I notice my cardio is better. Fuck if I yeah. do, you know, you're expanding the lungs. So when you do when you do the breath exercises, yes, oh yeah. my, you got to get this XPT app and uh, XPT XPT app, and yeah. it has this. You can pay for a subscription. It has a bunch more, but there's a, you scroll over and there's a free one. And I did it before we hit mitts yesterday. It was eight minutes, but it was just they guide you through like inhale, hold, and then we're gonna switch it to mouth like different different uh, exercises. But dude, before we hit mitts yesterday, I swear, and that coffee, but I swear that's mm-hmm. what made me feel like my, my, my lungs could just open up, my, just get yeah. you breathing right. But yeah, I agree. I think yeah. that affects your cardio positively a ton. Yeah. That's badass. Where did you learn your breathing exercises and shit? Just YouTube, actually. Really? Yeah, actually, no, there's um, <clears throat> a girl uh, called Adrian. I was actually out in uh, Tiger Muay Thai. She has a website, WTF Yoga. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that stands for, but uh, mm-hmm. she actually gave me a bunch of breathing exercises to do. So I just kind of followed them. She sent me a bunch of recordings. So I just play them when I'm on my bed. You know, I like to do it with a little edible in me as well. Ooh. You know, I find I do it better then. You know? Oh, yeah. A little yeah. puff. So I just kind of follow those. I did copy the Wim Hof one for a while, but I find it a bit of a chore. Really? Yeah, because it's, it's a lot. It's hard. Yeah, that. I find it difficult to do. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that before the cold plunge because we both have freezers and we get in, it, get in them. They're cold. Yeah. And I've been just doing the Wim Hof one too. It is a bit of a chore. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. It helps But the lot. one she sent me, it's like, you know, big, long, like... Eight seconds in, ten second pause, and then eight seconds out, Oof. ten second pause, and I find that more easier and I find it more relaxing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, fuck yeah, sweet. Yeah. What are we at, JX, for time? Forty-one. Damn, fucking perfect. Thanks yeah. for coming on. Yeah, yeah, no, really thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was bad. Yeah. And then yeah. we're training tomorrow at Taquinos, right? Um, and man, my flight's at one forty-five. Ah. So, but I'm gonna be back yeah, uh, very soon. Cool. You know, now I know everyone at the lab. You know, I'm gonna yeah, be coming definitely. back more regular. I'm gonna do some film when uh, Jared when I'm back. Can you? Hell yeah. And yourself, okay. I'd love to do some. Yeah, film with I'm yourself. always down for some sweet yeah. footage. Hell yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah, and you'll have to come to the competition training. You'll like it. It's all just brown yes. and black belts. Yeah. Just live goes. It's good. And me. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> and me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, thanks to our sponsors, ValleyWideGlass.com. And check out Happy Valley Pipe Company. Happy Valley and Valley Wide? Yep, Happy Whoa. Valley Pipe Company. They can do custom bongs. They can do custom pipes. When's our bong going to be done, that custom one? He said in about Soon? a week. You guys got to see this thing. It's yep. insane. Gooey and Vito. And how we met those guys. I don't remember how we Happy met those. Happy Valley? I think he, he messaged me and said, hey, do you have Joe Rogan's? Uh, uh, cool dude met, anyway. Yeah, his address to send him a pipe. And he sent Joe Rogan a pipe. And it was Joe of his puppy, and Joe yeah. posted it, and that's when they kind of blew up. That's sweet. So that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. So thanks to our sponsors, episode 70, and thanks, Stuart. Thank, Thank you. you. Peace. <laughs>